guys. Thank you for tuning in to the Elevate with Erica podcast. I'm your host, Erica. My mission is to connect with you through our stories and in that process, spread inspiration for you to go do amazing things with your life. I had crushed that this is the way to the perfect job, marriage and kids checklist and was left unhappy, stressed, living paycheck to paycheck and unfulfilled. I knew there had to be more to life than wishing away the week until Friday. And so I found that proof. And that's what I'm here to do for you and with you. Are you ready to create a life that gets you excited? Then elevate with Erica. Grab a bottle and get comfy, friends. It's time for some unfiltered advice. I have to tell you guys about a new meat delivery subscription service I'm using. ButcherBox delivers high quality meat you can trust right to your front door. I'm talking free range organic chicken, humanely raised pork, 100% grass fed and grass finished beef and wild caught seafood. So you can feel good about what you're eating, but also the taste and the quality are amazing. Free bacon, you guys. Yes, free bacon and free bacon for life. Did you hear me? That is ButcherBox's latest promotion beginning on June 14th for a limited time only. Place your order using my link in the show notes and get free bacon for life in all of your future shipments. So you guys were just as stumped as me coming up with a name for our squad here. So elevators does not fly. So I'm just going to call you guys friends because that's what you are to me anyway. You know what? And that's what I hope I feel like to you. So sometimes I'll have people comment or like send me a private message on Instagram and I'll respond back and they don't believe it's me. And I'm like, dude, I'm not Cher, you know, (laughs) like it's just me running this. I'm no different than you, possibly a little bit more weird. I'm just hoping to inspire other people to show up as themselves and go after whatever the hell they want without the weight of anyone else's opinions. So friends, I'm always here if you need someone to just be an ear. Man, if I could just help one person in a time of struggle or, you know, like honestly, even triumph. If I could just help one person know that they aren't alone, it would be everything to me. So I received a simple message from a gentleman today, very kind and simple message that said that he loved my energy because he's been super depressed since a recent breakup and he wanted me to just keep the videos coming because they inspire him. Isn't that awesome? The ability that we all have within us to inspire someone else. You don't need to be famous. It doesn't need to be anything elaborate. You just have to show up as you. You know, that's why when I hear people harp on social media negativity, I can't hear it. I just refuse to give light to those things. There is so much good on social media if you choose to see it. And if you don't see it, you're following the wrong people. You get to choose what shows up on your feed. Block, unfollow, unfriend, and release what does not serve you. When I open up my Instagram, all I see are reasons I need to get up and get my ass moving. Because that's the way I have it set up. That's who I chose to follow. That's who I choose to interact with. That's what shows up. When I was 30 and newly divorced and in debt and unhappy in my body, I followed women that had been divorced and were thriving. I followed women who were generating a big income and living their dream life. I followed women who were making the time to make their health and fitness goals a priority. I could have seen those people, right? I could have seen those people and let jealousy and hate take over, laid out all of the excuses of why it was easier for them so that I could get comfortable with my misery. And ladies, I'm talking to you for a minute. We see this a lot, don't we? It's really sad to see women knock each other down to raise themselves up. But you know what? Whenever I've been around women tearing apart other women, it's never because they are doing any better. You will not be torn down by someone doing better than you. That hate in their heart is coming from some sort of unhappiness in them. You have to know that so that you don't take it personal. But I intentionally surround myself with women who are living out lives, dreams, goals that I want. I use them as proof. If they can, I can. And that's what my social media feed does for me. If it's not doing that for you, it's not social media's fault. It's yours. You get to choose what you see. I've been asked before why I don't block all the men that follow me. 
you know, I recognize that I have a lot of men that follow me simply because of what I look like. They're not reading my captions, nothing. But unless they are saying something slimy on my page, they are not bothering me. Are they who I'm looking for to join my fitness groups? No, but my Instagram is not a sales page. I don't show up as I do on there just to sell subscriptions to our fitness site. If my bio could just say one thing, it would say to help other people not feel alone. People, not men, not women, to help other people not feel alone. That's why I'm there. To be for someone else what someone else was for me. To make someone smile or laugh or feel inspired. That's why I'm there. And I was doing that long before I was a beach body coach. Blocking someone because they are male, that's just not how I roll. I genuinely love people. I love meeting new people and listening to stories that make them who they are. I've said that before on here, I know, but it's just so interesting to me. And I love that we can connect through our stories. That's why this podcast is here. That's why it was born. That's my premise. Through our stories, we can make each other feel like we aren't alone in this, you know? In case you haven't noticed, I'm already sort of in my topic for today. I just returned home from a huge work conference in St. Louis that has been canceled the last couple years because of you know what. The energy, the people, the message from every event lit my soul on fire. Like I just knew that I was right where I was supposed to be. I was among these people that I aspire to be. I was among people that see the world as I do and that want to inspire others just as I do among thousands of people that feel this way coming out of a couple of years of so much isolation and division and finding it hard to find people who didn't only want to dwell on all the negative to being in a dome with thousands of people who were there because they had made working on themselves mentally and physically a priority and just wanted to inspire other people to do the same. And man, it was amazing, you guys. Simply incredible. I met people that I've only chatted with virtually for over two plus years now. I hugged them. I'm a hugger. (laughs) Everyone that said my name, I needed to hug and I did because I missed that. I missed that connection. And to have that connection with this amazing community, it was incredible. And I was so grateful to have my husband there with me for it. If you've kept up with my episodes, you know I didn't take on this career change with all the support of my husband. In fact, he made it clear that I did not have his support at all to leave my government job. He let me know what he thought I should do. And then I did what I needed to do. But guess what? Guess who was willing to come to this work conference with me two years later? Guess who woke up early for 5 a.m. workouts with me? Guess who sat in training sessions with me? Guess who sat in personal development sessions with me? Guess who left his book bag on the metro and made us ride a St. Louis metro for one and a half hours till he got it back? (laughs) Okay, that had nothing to do with this episode, but I just wanted you all to know that he did that. And guess what? We got it back with everything in it. Hallelujah. He kept saying, I'll be shocked if my iPad is still in it. And I kept telling him, you have to think positive. It will be. You can't think negatively like that. Like have faith, right? And sure enough. Anyway, back to my point, especially that last point. Guess who sat in personal development sessions with me? The man who hears me playing personal development podcasts every morning while I get ready for the past three years and tries to get in and out of that bathroom as fast as he can while I do. The man who sees me reading my personal development books morning and night. The man who said to me many times, you know, that personal development stuff, it's not really for me. Yes, the man whose wife has a personal development podcast said that. (laughs) It's okay. I just kept doing me. That man sat in two personal development sessions with me in St. Louis with two of the top personal development speakers there are, Bob Heilig and Brendan Burchard, and he left St. Louis a new man, let me tell you. I feel like this is my husband's story to tell one day, but I will say, by the final night there, he understood my obsession for this community and this company that I have chosen to partner with, and he wanted in. And he's interested in running alongside me. And on the flight home, I looked over at him reading what I thought was another one of his Stephen King novels on his iPad. But you guys, he was reading High Performance Habits 
by Brendan Burchard. That man was reading a personal development book. Holy shit, y'all. Like, I had to take a break while I was writing these podcast notes and relived that moment. I wanted to snap a picture of it going down, but I was also like, okay, don't act like this is a big deal, right? Like, this is normal. But proof of the power of our surroundings, you guys. Now he's back home, though, right? He's back in his normal surroundings, his normal settings and people. Will he continue to seek out people and opportunities that grow that fire he left St. Louis with? I don't know. That's his story to live out. But I will continue to do what I've always done. And maybe, just maybe seeing me and hearing me, hearing what I'm listening to, seeing what I'm reading, maybe it will at least keep that flame going within him. A little side note for you to really understand why this was such a big deal to me. I am super passionate about personal development. Obviously, right? I have a PD podcast. So seeing that turning point was huge. And honestly, it was really huge for our marriage. In my opinion, anyone who says they don't need personal development doesn't, one, understand what it is, and or two, thinks they have no room to grow. Now, I don't think these are you because you're listening to this podcast. Hello. You're elevating with Erica. High five, girlfriend. And I'm good with the first one because that was 100% me. Like, I didn't really understand it. But I was also the second one. And so was my husband. And it truly bothered me that my husband would say he didn't need personal development, that it wasn't for him. It's of my opinion that every human has room to grow. How can I be a better human? A question I'm constantly asking myself and feel like we all should. Working on ourselves is like the best thing we can do for each other. But I knew my husband just hadn't had that moment yet where something profoundly struck him. I listened to podcasts and just cried in the shower multiple times when I was in a low point in my life because I had found that person who felt like they were speaking just to me because they shed light on a place where I could grow. That is what happened for my husband this weekend. Now, I don't know what the specific message was that was a turning point for him because that was his, you know, specific pain point, but, but he turned a corner and I'm just I'm just so freaking excited for him, you guys. I know what's on the other side of personal development and it's growth and it's change. And that's our purpose here. What's not growing ain't living. Okay, so that was a long side note, but I just wanted to explain why it was so amazing for me to see my husband open up to this. It's how I feel when I have a new challenger sign up who is feeling terrible in their skin and who is messaging me a week into their journey wanting to quit. And I'm pouring that belief into them over and over and leading by example, And then I see them finish their third program, posting that sweaty, smiling selfie. (sighs) The power of who you surround yourself with. It's amazing what we can do and accomplish when we surround ourselves with people who have already done the thing we want or people who know we are capable before we believe we are. Or just people who are actively pursuing their own goals. It's proof that we can too. And we need to see that every single day because there's no telling how we may feel from one day to the next, right? One day I wake up and I'm going to do two workouts and clean the house and finally wash my hair and get a podcast done and play outside with my kids and cook an elaborate dinner and end with a movie night. And then the next day I wake up and I wonder how long till bedtime. It happens. Those days I rely more more on who I have chosen to surround myself with. They are there every single day when I log into my Facebook community. I see those women showing up for themselves. When I log into my social media feeds, I see people I've chosen to follow who are showing up for themselves. I've surrounded myself with thousands of people doing the damn thing, living, and they make me feel alive. Have you ever been around someone or a group of people just dwelling on everything that's going on? I'm sure you have. It's why I don't turn on the news anymore, right? You guys have heard me say that. It's why I've distanced myself from some people. I'm choosing not to absorb that energy. I don't have space for it. I don't make space for it. I'm too busy loading my bucket with what's going right with people who are proof of what's possible, with what amazing things are to come, with what I have the power to change, with what lies ahead if I do my part to make change. 
when you're around those soul-sucking events or people, when you're listening to their choice to harp on the negative or to talk bad about someone else, you either catch yourself participating, right? And you walk away from that feeling so drained. Negativity is so draining. It's why people who talk negatively about you aren't doing better than you because they don't have the energy to. Or you give yourself permission to walk away from that and you make a mental note to stay away from whatever that source was. I don't care if it was a family member. You can at least see them less. Make your interactions shorter. Protect your surroundings. They affect your thoughts right? Which affect your emotions, which affect your actions. Your surroundings are so powerful. You want something you don't have, surround yourself with people that have it. You want a better marriage, surround yourself with couples who are happy together, not ones who are bashing the other, fighting all the time. You want more money, surround yourself with people finding ways to make that happen for themselves. You will get ideas from them. You will see what's possible. You will find that it's within you to do the same. You want to lose weight and have more energy and eat healthier? Surround yourself with people doing those things. It's so freaking powerful. Or maybe clean up your environment so that it supports you in doing that. If it's harmful for you to have Oreos in the cabinet, then don't have Oreos in the cabinet. And guess what? Now we have social media and it makes it so much easier to surround ourselves with people that support us. We don't need to go to the grocery store and ask a stranger if they are doing anything awesome with their life, right? I mean, that would be a little weird. But we have access to millions of people on social media and we get to pick whose energy we choose to be around. And maybe even more importantly, we get to choose whose energy not to be around. I've worked in jobs where the energy was just dark, you guys. Maybe you can relate or maybe you have a friend group that feels that way, but I needed to pay the bills and I didn't see a way out yet. So I started doing other things to counteract the negativity in the workplace. The podcast in the morning while I got ready. The podcast in the evenings while I showered off the stress of the day. The music playlist to pick me up on the way in and while I was sitting at my desk. The scheduling of events to make sure I always had something to look forward to. It takes a good effort to schedule in joy, but that's what I did to control my surroundings at that time. And then I realized that a much better life was waiting for me if I took a more drastic approach. And so that's what I did. (laughs) But maybe you need new relationships. Maybe you need a new job. Maybe you need a social media overhaul. Think about the times when you feel the most drained, negative, unhappy, stressed, and the people and environment that you're around when you feel that way. And then change it. Change the players. It is up to you. I read a couple examples online that I really related with about the power of our environment and how our decisions are largely based on what's around us. So think about this example. Think about a dinner plate. The bigger it is, the more we put on it, right? This is why you can't have those like giant chinette oval plates. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> your barbecue, unless you have an abundance of food and you aren't worried about having enough for all your guests, right? Because they will pile it high. I know you've seen it. They, they like stack those plates. And then you see plates being thrown away with food on it still, right? People were influenced by the wide area of the plate, and they got more food than they needed. Also, think about this. You guys know I work out every single morning. A huge part of my consistency is because my workout space is in my home. If I had to drive out to a gym, I would procrastinate more. I would find more excuses. But this home fitness platform works for me because my environment is now set up to support my goals. So, of course, by the way, that, uh, you know, I'm going through this podcast and the trash truck is here. So if you can hear all that commotion in the background, my apologies. I have to hide in my sunroom to record my podcast now that my boys are home from school and my husband works nights. So he's here during the day. So this is supposed to be my quiet space. But hi, trash truck. Anyway, your surroundings (laughs) can even just be as simple as the way space in your home makes you feel. For example, this sunroom I set up in, right? It makes me feel at peace. So if my kitchen 
or my living room are untidy, it makes me feel like my entire house is a disaster. I don't know if anyone else is that way. If my kitchen counter is full of crap, I feel so stressed out. If my sink is full of dishes, I cannot focus on cooking a meal for my family. If you have a space in your home that doesn't make you feel good, doesn't support you or what you're trying to do, then change it up. Declutter, brighten the decor, whatever you need to do, your surroundings are powerful. Set them up to support you. This St. Louis event was powerful for me and my husband. The trainings, the personal development sessions, the people, it was so powerful that we just kept waking up each day on very little sleep and we were ready to do it all over again. My husband even said, you know, there wasn't a moment on this trip where I wasn't having a great time. How cool is that? Like, that brings tears to my eyes. This was something for my business, and he enjoyed every moment. It filled our cup so much that we were running off that high the environment gave us. We sure as heck weren't running off sleep. <laughs> that environment was powerful. Don't you want friends that make you feel that way? Don't you want people around you that make you feel that energy to be alive, to feel alive? Don't you want your surroundings to make you excited to live? You have to do that. You have to make it happen. And I know you can. I know you can because I did. And because I did, I'm seeing the coaches on my team do it. And because I did, I get to see my husband doing the same. And that's, again, another amazing byproduct of this is that we can become that source or that force, I should say, in someone else's surroundings that makes them feel alive. And we can do that for one another. We can be the light we wish to see. Go do it. I'm not saying it's easy. We are changing our norm, right? We're changing habits. We're changing things we do and people we are around without even really thinking about it. I'm asking you to think about it, though. I'm asking you to put in some extra effort today for a future benefit. Change something in your environment today. It doesn't have to be something huge, but something that changes the way you feel. And if you want to, tell me what it is. I would love to hear from you. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up this episode, so let's raise our glasses for a cheers. Cheers to setting up our environments, to bring out the person in us we want to be to choosing to be in and around people and spaces that support the life we desire, that make it easier to build and stick to better habits, to raising the standards of our surroundings so that we can raise the expectations of ourselves. Until next episode, friends. E.